Hello and welcome back to ABC Murders. Um, last time we went to a castle to see. Oh, actually, we we finished off the beach murder first, and then we went to a castle. There was another murder going on at the castle, beginning with C, because castle. I can't remember the area. There was it was a town or something like that. And it was a, a rich man, rich older man, who was slashed in the throat. And um, his brother is having an affair with his assistant secretary lady. So there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, unsure sort of stuff going on at the moment. But we're going to jump back in and I believe, hopefully it will load back up where I left it off. Uh, we were about to talk to everyone involved in the three murders and do kind of our Poirot bit where we like, this is what's happened. Yes, it perfectly did. Right, so we have everyone here. I think it's from right to left. Oh, no. Where are we? Oh, okay. We're not walkable. So we've got the sister, I believe of the first person who was murdered. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song say. Okay, Poirot always a little bit creepy. Then I believe this is the assistant lady of the guy who got murdered last at the castle. The song says, sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. being a bit weird, Poirot. And we've got the guy, the brother of the guy who got murdered. Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. Then we've got Hastings. There was an observation I'd missed there. Can't observe Hastings. Franklin Clark always seems to have done that one. Is there anything else to observe around here? Interesting. I don't know what that is. Um, and then we've got the fiance of the woman who was murdered at the beach. Oh. Donald is always on edge. He hasn't slept in a while. It's like it, the controller vibrates and you can see it goes like a little dark circle around it. There's something around here, but I don't know. Leave me alone. No. Tense hands. There you go. But you've been observed, mate. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he's trying hard to control himself. And then this is the sister who is in love she with Donald. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. It's because she knew Donald was going to be there. Earring. Necklace. Looking at Donald. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for... I believe so. Okay, so... We're going to have to talk to each one of these. So I suppose we start with the people uh, in the first murder, which is just one person. I wonder if I messed that up. I think there might have been a second person, which maybe I asked the wrong questions and stuff. So that's a bit annoying. But we'll go with this lady first, who I can't remember her name. Then we'll move on to these two for the other murder and then end up with these two. So let's go. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. I already have. What examination am I missing? Is it this one? Because... I hope to concentrate on my guest. I wish to oh, thank you all for coming. 
I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? Ask Megan the reason for this meeting. Tell Megan not to be in such a hurry. Oh, I don't know. See, this is the problem. It doesn't really make it completely obvious as to, like, what I should pick, you know? Um, I am going to tell Megan not to be in such a hurry. Or I could ask her the reason for this meeting. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, why? Megan, dear girl, please be patient. Mr. Proro, how dare you address me by my first name? Please excuse me, mademoiselle. Not like to what I ask is that you search name. your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name by chance starts with B. Must we go into that? Uh, agree that the subject creates a feeling of some of discomfort. Um, let's agree. No, of course. Not if it makes you uncomfortable. Come on, Mr. Poirot. I imagine we all feel terribly uncomfortable about these murders. It's true. We've to catch the killer, not be spared the gory details. Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Oh, I, I did that wrong. Well, I want to help you, but I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard, did your sister say if she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. I feel like um, I'm coming at this the wrong way, right? Poirot is pushy. He doesn't mind getting in people's faces and being very kind of unapologetic. So maybe I've just got to be a bit more brash, shall we say. And just like maybe urge Megan Allons, surely sisters have no secrets she never spoke about any of that to me do you believe me or do I have to repeat myself Betty knew I didn't approve of her behaviour her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had tell me mademoiselle what did you talk about with your sister silly things her new dress she wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Mm, poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. We do. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Killed when the streets were packed with people. That's rather bold. Killer has a methodical. Ah, the killer is methodical and prepares his crimes meticulously. He never forgets to leave an in his intriguing signature behind. No? Without ABC, the ABC, you might have suspected Miss Asher and Mr. Frazier, but by signing his crimes and murder is making sure he, he is accused in a way very generous of him. Wait a minute. Do you think these people are somehow connected and they've invented the ABC murder to get away with doing the murders? Because we're just completely writing off these people who are very clear suspects because of that. Maybe. And maybe that's what he's going to turn around and say. So it sounds like that. Not that. Okay, so the man seduced Betty before taking her to the beach where he strangled her. A passenger timetable. Maybe the murders, murderers like... I'm just selecting them all now. Let's look at this murder. Please, you see that the murder carried out.
I don't understand. I'm selecting what, like... Clever. Okay. Ah, oh, damn it. I just saw the question at the top. Is the killer sure of himself? The killer... The killer was street was packed with people. It's rather bold. He's sure of himself. He's self-confident. Okay. It makes more sense when you see the question at the top. A seducer. A man seduced Betty. Does the killer like trains? Yes. I'm getting there now. Is he killer impulsive? No. Because he plans them. Is the killer generous? Yeah, because he's making himself the potential suspect rather than the people who would be the suspect. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we cannot surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... <sighs> Push Mary so that she helps. Ask Mary what is bothering her. Point out that she she is short of money for the train. Uh, what's bothering her? Is something bothering you, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see, I don't know if I can come to London just like that. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir... I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our grey matter. Although that achievement didn't pop up. Let thoughts. us now try and get our brain cells to work. What do the victims have in common? Now, this one I'm really not sure about. So, hopefully this will make it clearer. Oh, there you go. Man, that was delayed. I got my... It popped up on my phone and my PC. Like, at least a minute before it popped up on the Xbox. Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. The body was still warm. Betty had a photo of her and Donald. The victim was called Asher. Miss Asher took cough medicine. Mr. Asher had a violent husband. Donald was a violent man. Oh, hang about. Violence. Betty had problems with her voice. Sir Camel Clark was a famous retired doctor. Damn it. There is a link there, he thinks. Doctor, maybe? Throat afflictions. A throat doctor. The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Churston. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. So it might be one of his patients or like a assistant of his or something. 
think I need to move. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first Maybe floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Achievement, eh? Curve and swoop moustache. You've brought all... Su so I must have got all the suspects in. Right. Um, ask Thora if Thora is going on holiday. Ask if Thora is leaving her job. Holiday or job? Let's ask if she's leaving. Are you leaving Cheston for good? Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. If she doesn't work for him, they can have their little affair, can't they? Okay. So, wait, do we look around the room first? It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait no, any longer. Go straight up then. Oh, damn, she's not looking good. It would be rude to oh, make yeah. Lady Clark wait any longer. She's shaking all over the place. Let's observe her. This poor woman is very ill. Do you think she's being poisoned? Dazed eyes. Shaky arms. Well, um, I hate to be that guy, but they are not clenched fists. Painkillers. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Do I try and talk to her? Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? What is going on with she this animation? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Can I look at this or do I have to go straight to the telephone? Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Do you? Let's go take the phone first. Flippin' Eck is so eager to shoot her up. The Clark Residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Hidden in the lion trophy. Is it in there? Is that a lion? That's a lion. It's... It says lion. Here is the skeleton key. That is a, a funky looking lion, I'm not going to lie. Is there nothing else to uh, observe? April 1925, Aceh province, Sumatra. There you go. Let's go give this lady her drugs. Oh, one minute. Uh, da, da, da. Where are they? It, oh, it's there, I think. I was going to say, yeah, do we actually have to go downstairs to get the drugs? We could probably open this. It's closed. Oh, right, yeah, we have to go... Use... Ta-da! 
Ah, Mr. Poirot. Ah, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. That's all right. No worries. Ask what、uh, she has to say about the murder. Remind her of her invitation to come and see her. Let's remind of the invitation. Let's not jump straight into murder. You asked for me, cher madame. Yes, yes, of course. I wish to speak with you. But what was it about? Murder. No doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband. Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? Not yet, cher madame. There was a great many people in Chester on the day of the murder. Indeed, people go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombside. Coombside, there you go. So there were no strangers around the house that day. Who said that? The people who live here, your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go immediately. You are entitled to do so, Nat. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her, but at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. What's she up to?、Oh. Is she the murderer? Okay, she's just having a snooze now. There you go. Okay. I really want to know what it is on the floor. So let's、uh, let's see what this is. This subject would probably be useful. A silver comb. Do we have to? No, we've done the little grey cells. Wake her up and continue talking to her. She is sleeping. I must find a way to wake her up gently. How do you wake someone up gently? There's another silver cube. This subject would probably be useful to me. Oh, it's a golden comb. It's a lot of combs. Oh no. The mechanism appears to be broken. Okay, I hate these. I'm really not good at them. All right, so you can't look at the bottom. Oh, this is what you need to. This is where the combs go. That's what I was about to say. Silver. And then gold. The other combs are preventing me from positioning this one. Gold and silver. Can I? How do I take this one off? There you go. So you put this one down, and then this one, and then can we turn it? The mechanism appears to be broken.、Oh. This spring appears to be broken.、Oh, I've got a spring. Oh, nice. Let's um. Where?、Uh, I mean, you said this. Ah, that one. This spring appears to be broken. I can't even remember where I got this spring from, but awesome. That's nice and easy. I hope that Hastings will not be cross with me. Oh, it's me. the pen that you got him. Yeah, I remember now. So if we go back now and go to, no, go to here, go to the side. What the heck? Why、oh, is there no music? Does not make any sound.
This part appears to be working. It needs to be higher, maybe? Higher and higher. Um. Okay, so this bit on here. This bit on here. But it's not touching. This part appears to be working. Does not make any sound. It should, because it should hit these little things and go ding, 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 ding. Um, we've got everything we need, because there's no, you can't back out of it just yet. This part appears to be working. Why would it not be making any sense? This sound? part okay. appears to be working. Um, is there a keyhole? We've got a key. Alright. Let me have a thing. So we have... Oops. We have... Uh, a music box. We put down the combs which play the sound in the right order put the new spring in but when we turn it it doesn't make any sound No, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm like trying to look at it in a different way. So you can turn it, it doesn't work. Like turning it the other way doesn't work either. Does not make any sound. Make any sound. I, I, we could spend a lot of time just staring at this. Let's um, let's back out and maybe we've missed something in the room, and then we'll go back into the puzzle because I just feel like we've missed something. This couple appears to be having fun. Okay, they seemed happy. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. That's probably why they were happy. <laughs> um, let's have a look at ra around the rest of the room. Is there anything on the table, maybe, that I'm missing? Or what's that? This subject would probably be useful oh to me. Oh my goodness. Was there another comb? Oh, there's a bronze comb. Do I have a... Why is that flashing? I don't know. Is there anything... I've finished with this subject. Okay, so there's nothing more on there. Um, I can't wake her up. Oh, the music will wake her up. Right, okay, I get it. And we were missing a comb, so that's why. 
Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. Sure. Okay, let's try this again, now that we actually have everything that we need. Uh, what, what order was it again? It was gold. So if it was gold first, I'm going to guess it was silver. So gold, silver, bronze. Like, that just makes the most sense, doesn't it? Ta-da! Okay, that's really annoying that I spent so long just looking at it, not thinking. Ah, uh, that could be... I hope that Hastings will not be cross with me. Still not making any noise. Oh, thank goodness for that. I was like, why are you not making any noise? She's had better days, hasn't she? She's not looking good. Right. Why why don't you trust the lady? Oh talking about? Ah, yes. Uh, uh, Thora Grey. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her. But for me, she was nothing but a hypocrite. Um, ch -ch -ch indicate that Thora did a good job or approve. Let's approve. You're probably right, madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased. That I've convinced you. Whoa, she like sprung. Uh, ad admit being wrong about Thora. Remind her that Thora is an orphan. Go for an orphan. You are very harsh. Do not forget that the girl is an orphan. Yes. And she used the fact to get around men. Ooh. Take Franklin. He's fallen for her sweet-talking charms. Oh, he's a lovely boy, very plucky and sure of himself. But so naive. Oh, when it comes to women. <laughs> what is that voice? So naive. Ooh. <laughs> when it comes to women. Um, okay. Remind that Thora took care of her. Miss Grey did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Grey? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like it proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at eleven o'clock I saw her talking to someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. Okay, so this poorer lady is... The telephone in the hall is ringing. Definitely problems. <sighs> Time to get the phone. Who do you think it's going to be now? Probably Hastings. Hello? Poirot, is that Thank you? Me. Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. 
but secretive. I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. Einstein mustache. The viewpoint of a sick old lady has very much value. I don't finish all. Okay. Interesting. What's this? How am oh, I going no. to open this trunk? <laughs> Not enough of thinking. Let us examine puzzle. it. All right, let's have a look. So we've got a code that we need to put in there. Right, we're going to have to leave because there's th we need to figure out somewhere so we can find the code for it. Oh, check ourselves out in the mirror. Three ego points. Um, what's over here? Okay, we've got a map. We're looking for four numbers, aren't we? Oh, for goodness sake. I must need something to continue. Before we go into any of these finger puzzles, I'm not going to go into the same mistake. Let's see if we can find items that we might need. It doesn't look... Ah, let's have a look at this area. Franklin appears to be very active. He's a hunter. He likes playing tennis. And he has killed many an animal. Impressive is maybe not what I would call it, but... Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman. A good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Okay, so... February 1922, South Africa. I feel like these dates are going to mean something. Because we can, like pinpoint where he was in certain countries like he's going to have met someone in July 1920 Alaska or something Alaska Peninsula I think or it might just mean nothing Franklin Clark okay. appears to be a typical nothing British a gentleman a good sportsman a hunter a traveller so, we've observed everything there. Is there no items that we can pick up? Okay, I'm going to say for now... Ooh. Oh, one minute. Was it? Oh, no. Is this another puzzle? Flipping heck, there's three puzzles. Ay, ay, ay. Four Chinese symbols are engraved on this padlock. No way... I'm even going to be able to start to try and figure that one out. Okay. Okay, we're going to leave this room for now. We're going to see if we can find more clues. Because we've got the whole place to explore now, so... We've already done that one. <clears throat> Let's see... The door is locked. We've got a skeleton key. Get that door open. This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patients. Let us study Something. them closely and see if there are any familiar names. I, I don't think this is fully legal. No dust on the records from A to D. They've been handled recently. Is it... No known names. Disappointing. Oh, it looks like it's been the stuff that's missing. Lots of dust. The records from E to Z have not been touched for years. No known names. Disappointing. Something tells me that someone's got rid of the files that would be helpful. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Okay, so we've done that. What's this? C 
Combside Private Collection. Combside Private Collection. Purchases since 1920. The catalog for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. Okay. Not sure where that helps us. So we used the table already. A knife. Is this the knife that was used for Zimada? I've already seen similar daggers. Yeah, there was they were in the thing. Can we not take it? A dark dragon for a bright haired maid. Task list was Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. For it's not looking good for Thora, is it? I think she might be a... Uh... She might be a bit... Uh, dodge. Okay. Do we go outside? I mean, I... The problem is there's a bit too much room now. I don't want to start any of these um, Is there somewhere we can put a key in? Ah, here we go. I don't want to start any of these um Compass point to the thals. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong 1935. Slam talk. I don't want to start any of these puzzles without checking that I've got everything because, as we've seen, you can start a puzzle and realize there are some very valuable quick. objects. So it doesn't really help you. Uh, I, let's see. He might say, I can't go outside yet. I've got more to do in here. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mental. Cool. So, w this room, I feel, is fully explored. We've checked everything. So we're gonna go on to the next room now. One minute. Did we look at the paintings on the wall? Because uh, as I was leaving, that one just looked... I think we've already looked at this one, actually. Oh, hang about. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm going to need a pen and paper. So, there's four... What are they called? Chinese symbols on the map. I think that might be how we open that puzzle. So, I'm going to use a pen and paper to write these down. So, top... We're going to go top left. And then across... And then across like that and like that. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right order, but if we write them all down, we can try different orders. So we've got like little hat with an I with a dash through it. Then we have H with a little box with a. How do you even describe that? Whatever that is, squiggle at the bottom with like rugby goals at the bottom or football goals. It's probably more like football goals. Right then, bottom left we have big square, little square, cardboard box, uh, line underneath it, line down connecting, 
square with a little square in it. Right now we have big square, sideways goal with a square inside of it, and an X next to it. Okay. Oh, one minute. There was an observation. Where, oh, where are you, observation? Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. Oh, one minute. If south's on the top, does that mean that they're upside down, those symbols? Or am I just making it more complicated? Let's go have a look. Let's see if we can figure it out, shall we? So it's here, I think, that the... Four Chinese symbols are engraved on this padlock. There we go. So we're looking for... None of, none of them are the symbols. No! I thought it was being really clever, but... I mean, the closest one is that. And this upside down. Let me just turn these upside down and see a piece of paper if any of these look like anything. No. Oh, damn it, I thought that was something. I won't manage to do it randomly. Should I look at the rest of the facade, maybe? Is it on here? Well, well. The characters engraved on this disc resemble those engraved on the padlock. Okay. Like this, this character appears to be the right way around. Okay. Oh, forget that one then. Maybe I used that one already, the map one. So it's that dash. I'm just drawing it out so I don't have to keep coming back to stuff. Because it'd be, be quite annoying. Like this. This character appears to be the right so way round. Third one, so let's leave space for that. For the next one in between. I have not left enough space. My drawings are not good. If anyone I think is it did he say this is Chinese? If anyone who read Chinese tried to read what I've just drawn. It just makes me think, like, it's actually imagine for English characters, I feel like it's quite The position of this character looks right to Um I suppose it's easy because I've done it all my life, but just it seems a lot more complicated to write anything in Chinese, but it must be easy if you've done it. But just like texting seems wild to me. If you're going to text using um, Chinese characters. This character appears to be the wrong way out. Maybe I should look to the padlock again. All right, chill out. Like this. This character appears to be the right way round. Let me just draw it out. I wonder if people, you know how we have bad handwriting in in England, especially like doctors and stuff. I wonder if people have to do like really poor Chinese characters. And you're like you're trying to read them is just like impossible. All right. So we have that one, then that one, then that one. Oh, and the last one was already right. Cool. At last, the cupboard is open. At last. Let's see what's in the cupboard. English countryside is back in fashion. Gentle and wild. English countryside revisit. Okay. It's just a book about the English countryside. <clears throat> the Railway Children. E. Nesby. Railway. For Franklin. Own Christmas, 1910. 
Is Franklin the killer? But why? Why would he kill the other two? Traveling in China: A practical guide for English travelers. Are they going to go China? But he's been to China, obviously, because he's got so much Chinese. And met flask and rifles. Franklin is very well equipped. Is that everything? Well, that was, I'm not going to lie, slightly disappointing. Right. Okay, one minute. This needed something. Maybe it needs a key. Nope. This plate appears to be able to move, but something is blocking it. So I need something. So I'm not going to be able to solve this unless I find what needs to go in it. I would have just thought there was something on that desk, but no. Um, we've, have we done with all the observations here? Four out of four. There's nothing more to do with that. It just feels a little bit like there was nothing in there. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. How am I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. Okay, so you need numbers. The numbers scratch somewhere. Hang about nineteen twenty seven. It wouldn't be that easy, would it? Twenty-seven, wouldn't it? That is the equivalent of like. Leaving right the, the code on the trunk. Computer password. What a strange down. character Franklin is. That's Franklin, I'm guessing. Can you move these? Can you? Oh. Oh, it, it goes down. Are we? Are we telling a story with this? One on that one. Seven. Ah, we have to put time in. Okay. Seven. Twenty. Okay, I see. So we want to put that one at 20, this one at 7. So, what is this sound? Oh man, I like it when you get one of these right. I feel like you're actually smart. I should be able to open the time. Open. Or do I have to use the key? No, why won't I? Or do you use the key? No. What's going on? Why can't I? No, I don't want to quit. I want to interact. There you go. 
There we are. There we go. I don't know why that was having so much trouble. <clears throat> right. Now what? I mean, that's just as simple as lifting that up, right? Whiskey. Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Mr. Crack really has refined taste. Tasty. Now we've got drawers. What am I doing? Keep, keep seeing observe and thinking, oh, it's just that, but it's, um, it's observed the key. False bottoms on these or something, maybe? Last one. What the heck is that? Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his oh, trunk? For the map. I'll borrow it for a minute. Is that it? What's, what's here? A pile of books, including one about dragons. Nothing interesting. Allen key. Did that do it? No. What is going on? so close to I <laughs> don't know what what to do am I missing something that's definitely something to do with the top there I think Okay, triangle. We can't use the Allen key on it. We can't use the skeleton key. For obvious reasons. It's a skeleton key. And it's not it's not like the right keyhole shape. Let me interact with it. It won't let me. Maybe if I observe. An Allen key. It can be used in five position. Oh, do we have to pick which one? I need a triangle of some sort. That one. How do you? How do you say yes to that? I just go back and now try and use it. Yes. Oh, okay. Fair enough. What did that do? <laughs> Can I look under? No. Oh, oh there's another Allen key. Um, so you observe, and now you need... An Allen key can be used in five positions. So if we go one across, I think that was the right shape. So we go A and then X. Another screw. Okay. So that, that screw is done. I'm guessing there's just one more on the other side. And hopefully we don't have to 
we've already checked picked, so we should yeah, just be able to use it again. Okay, we're getting there. Man, these are painful. This engraving is not very easy to understand. I need to sort it out. Alright, let's have a look. What does this look like? So it's just kind of match up from the top down. Okay. Match. I think I recognize the shape already. But. Uh, okay. Why, can't, why is that? There you go. I think we might be looking at. It is blocked. It's blocked. That is definitely right there. That looks all right. It's this bit which doesn't. Maybe it's not right. Maybe we need to move it all so it fits with that. Maybe. Flipping out. This is not easy. Um... I think I've just made it even worse. Uh, it is blocked. Oh, maybe. Okay. Ha ha ha. so close oh we're so close Franklin must oh. really love his country to have an engraving in his trunk I think I heard the panel above really Panel above release, he said. What the heck? <laughs> Ooh, a signet a ring. A signet ring? A signet ring with a code written on it. 1587. It may be useful to me. 1587. Okay, well, that was a lot of work. I'm not really sure what for, but we got a, a, 15, a code 1587. We also got this map, which we need to do something with. But we oh, we don't have it anymore. I was going to use the Allen key. Aha, the plates around the picture the... appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophy. So what does? Okay, I see. The uh, the animal that was killed. Oh, damn it! Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to leave and write down. So basically, I think what we have to do is write down where each animal was killed, and then put the animal in the right place. So the bear was killed. July 1920, Alaska. Alaska Peninsula. Cool. The ibex or deer. Fifteen 
February 1922, South Africa. Just writing it down for a minute. So we've got two. Um, we had the lion out in the other room, didn't we? I don't think I've, there are any more in this room. So we've got the lion. I feel like we need one more. April 1925, Sumatra. at Shea Province, Sumatra. Sumatra. Is Sumatra in Africa? Damn, my geography isn't amazing. Um, is there anything here? I need to. The Black Dragon's Curse. To Franklin, who will never grow up. January 25, 1928. Car Charlotte. Don't know who Car Charlotte is, but there you go. That might come up. Arsenic. I mean, if she's been poisoned, arsenic is the thing you'd poison them with, right? Miss Thoragray Comside Tristan Dever. Why would. Arsenic trioxide thallium. Uh, for any medical reason, why would you need arsenic? I don't think there's any, like, it's just a poison, isn't it? I don't think there's any actual medicinal Best use. to leave her to sleep now. Okay, so we can't go back up there. So there's probably no animals in her room. But to be fair, you don't want to be sleeping with, like, a dead creature, like, roaring over you or whatever. Um, is there any animals in here? No, it doesn't really fit the aesthetic, does it? Sumatra's so either Asia or Africa, and I need to double check which because otherwise I'll get it wrong. So I'm just going to quickly get my phone and Google Sumatra. Indonesia, so that's Asia. Okay, so we've got bear, bear, ibex, and lion. So we open this, put the ring in. Oh, did we need the dates? I hope not. The plates around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies. Symbols? Wait a minute. Damn it. Was I supposed to be looking for symbols? So let's go bear. South Africa. That's, that's there. Does that count? I don't understand what this means. Oh, South Africa. So if you went across from here to here. The African could. Oh, it's a kudu. Ah ha ha. Okay, I get it. Alaska's here. You need bear, poor. This is Alaska, isn't it? No? Doesn't want to... Okay, let's just do the line, which is Sumatra. Which means... Indonesia, which I think is around about here. So you go... That. And then... The Lion of Sumat. Nice. Maybe one of these ones has to be changed. That's bear as well. Ah, 
Well, I know it'll probably have to be. Okay. The Alaskan Kodiak bear. That's. I heard the sound of a mechanism. Strange way of protecting one's safe. Triangulating one's hunting sites on the map. It is a bit odd. Uh, there was a number on this, wasn't there? 1587. A signet ring bearing the Clark's family's coat of arms. A number is written on it. 1587. So let's, let's try that. That's the first number we will try. One. Five. Eight. These oh. documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. It's gone very well. These, uh... Okay. A dozen gold sovereigns. Some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much. Hardly enough to justify your robbery. He has shares in Southern Robbery. Uh, Southern... A dozen gold sovereigns. Uh, What's it called? In Sir Railway. Carmichael Clark, Kamsai Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Sasbury Road, Tsinshasui, Kowloon, Hong Kong, Kamsai, 1935, January the 12th. Dear Franklin, first, I wish you a good start to a successful new year. I have received your letter dated December 10th. Thanks for defending my interest against Wang, this robber. Things could have got pretty bad if you weren't a real good-blooded guy. I envy you for that. Things go on here much as usual. Charlotte is moderately free from pain. I wish one could say more. You may remember Thora Gray. She is a dear girl and a greater comfort to me that I can tell you. I should not have known what to do through this bad time but for her. She has an exquisite taste and shares my passion for Chinese art. No daughter could be a closer or more sympathetic companion. Life has been difficult, but I am glad to feel that here she has a home and true affection. You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I don't object. The longer you stay, the more opportunities you will have to increase our collection. Nonetheless, you should know that we miss you here, and that Charlotte will be gone by the time you come back. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate brother. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of information in that letter. Charlotte Clark Comsai Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury World, Chim Shatsui, Colon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January 1st. I wish you with all my heart a happy year 1935. Writing my greeting cards, I have affectionate thoughts for you. Always smiling as a child, sailing to distant countries and bringing back to us trunks full of wonder. At home, everything annoys me. Starting with this young Thora Sir Carmichael is so fond of. I have nobody to share my feelings with. So I write to you. How can I tell you what happens to me? The simplest way the better. I am doomed. I still have one year to live no more. How do I know? I opened the secret drawer of Carmichael and read a letter not addressed to me. In this letter, Dr. Logan tells my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, I know. But my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. And if he shares the truth with you, act as you are surprised. Carr will probably speak in his usual convoluted way but I wanted to be the first to announce it to you. It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards, Charlotte. Okay, so she knew she was going to die. That's pretty hefty. Eton College School Year, 1912-1913. Franklin Clark. School report for Franklin Clark. According to his teachers, Franklin was a good student, but lacked discipline. I felt like there was going to be more in there, but still, there's, there's something. Are we done now? 
still inspecting the mansion. Okay, so we've done that one. We've observed everything. We've done that one and observed everything. Nothing else. I don't think there's anything else in here. We opened the... Um, what's it called? The trunk. And... Do we leave now? Order and method above all. What am I missing? What do I need to explore? I mean, we've already looked at this, right? Unless there's somewhere for a key. I see some papers that were not there the first time I visit. Oh, okay. Yes, we didn't. Valuers report property. Building land located in Comside, Churston Client, Sir Carmichael Clark, April 15, 1935, Court and Brunskill Office. So they valued the place. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. You sure? Because it's frickin' missing. <laughs> Ernest Luggan, oh. MD, Brighton Concert oh, Institute, good. 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. Wow, we've done the whole entire To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD, Comsite, Cheston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. But if she's getting poisoned with arsenic, could that be what the problem is? Valuers report. Pro what am I missing here? Maybe there's something else. Valuers to... report prop. Court and Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? There you go. Inspect the mansion's surroundings. Flipping heck, we're doing a lot of inspecting at the moment. Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? I hear running water. Right, let's, let's just work our way down. Something makes me feel uncomfortable. That. Is that a dead rat? Drown pellets. Revolted. Ta -ta. The gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. Another achievement. Cesium 133 crystal. I've tidied up the price. Just gotta make sure that we keep the place tidy. Okay, so. That is the balcony area done. So let's move down. Oh my goodness. Okay. This wisteria is in full blue. Okay. Just searching for anything that we need to look at. I would like to congratulate Clark's gardener. What simit? You're just moaning about Clark's gardener before. Okay. I don't actually think there's anything here. It's just like a nice little... Little garden area. Probably looking... 
Clark's greenhouse. It must hold some rare plants. Do we go in? Oh wow, they've set up something already. May you have peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. Okay. I think that might be it. Yeah. Not too much. I mean, there is a weirdly discoloured bit at the top. So, I think we're not looking at anything else here. There's no way to go this way. Man, this, this bit is a little bit more open to just wandering around, and I'm not sure I like it. It's a bit, uh, a bit too way, like, there's no direction of where we've got to go. We're just looking for stuff. So that way is to go, and then there's this garden which doesn't seem to have any anything that we need to look at. So I, I think the garden is done. This fountain makes a very relaxing yeah. sound. I think we need to pee. He walks so slow as well. It was a bit of a faster movement. Oh, you don't have to walk to stuff. That probably would help. Okay, so that's the... In my opinion, the garden is now done. So let's go to the front and see if the front... You need to have a look at anything. Maybe? I am not going to leave Comsign now. I still have some things to... Okay, maybe I was wrong. Inspect the mansion surroundings. So it must be out there. I've definitely missed something. Damn it. Who knows what it could be. Mm. Let's let's go out and see. Um, I mean, I couldn't look at the fountain without going up to it, so maybe I need to go up to stuff rather than, like, hover over it. Look. Oh, now I can. So we've got this, and that we've already looked at. The benches, no. We've looked at that already. I feel like this is something. I just, I don't know. There's nothing else. But every time I hover over it, nothing is there. Um, see, I think you do actually have to get close to things so you can observe them. It was probably the gardener who led this fight. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. This subject would probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Hey, okay, brain cell time. I think that might be the outside done. Why did Thora leave personal belongings behind at Kemside? Um, well, that, because they are the things that she left. Uh, left her letter behind. Doesn't want to be accused of theft. Fair enough. 
Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusts her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Is Thora a poisoner? I don't know, I feel like she could have poisoned her. Thor Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the pass, not far from the property. <laughs> I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Okay, so we're not really any closer. I do feel like Thora is something to do with it, though. I feel like she's probably Thora and a person who we don't know yet are working together. They killed the doctor and two of his patients because they know something or have been involved in something before. It's usually how Agatha Christie stuff works. It's usually more than one person, right? When a few years back, me and my wife went to see um, a mouse trap in London. It's a great show. It's like peak Agatha Christie. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Put the skeleton key back, do I? April 1924. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Cool. Okay, that's all done. But yeah, Mousetrap is a great show, if you ever get a chance to see it. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shurston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burnt document? Yes, you just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. À ce soir. À ce soir. I feel like we're getting close to the end of this, to be honest. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. Okay, let's go have a chat with Mr. Fraser. Ooh, another achievement. This I'm man is tired. Oh, is he drinking? I think this man is having a tough time of it. Right? Unshaven. Crumpled clothes. Man, if Poirot was to look at me, he would be like, this man is Donald going is short tough of times, sleep. Because I'd never and it looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. Been there. I have been there. Right. Let's have a chat with Donald and see what he has to say. Mr. Paro, I don't know why I'm here. Uh, become impatient with his indecision. Accuse him of being guilty. Reassure him of the fact that he will be listened to. Um, let's reassure, I, I, I literally before said that we need to be a bit more uh, assertive, but let's reassure. You wanted to talk, and you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Paro, since Betty's death, I have doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row. Um, encourage him to continue. Have a drink, and tell me about this dream. It 
it's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her round the throat and I squeeze and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. But I would never tell her about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Very interesting. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds pretty messed up. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Are we going to interpret the dream? Well, Poro, you're better than me, so... He's very much in love with Betty. Was a violent man. Let's take away the violence and put the likes Megan. Okay, no, it's not that one. Donald is starting to have feelings for Megan and he feels guilty about abandoning Betty. Yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. Do. This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. Ooh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. You've helped me a great deal. I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like trains. Hang about. It's easy to sleep rock by the sound of the wheels. He likes trains. Poor boy, he seems completely lost. Well, women seem to like him. I think really Megan will take stash. care of him. Oh, I remember. Did you order the product I needed? Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Bien, it is late. And ask Miss Gray to come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. Nice. Okay, so that was, I mean, it took long, but that was pretty productive. Mademoiselle, I asked you here in order to answer a very important question. Uh, reminder that she, is not see, uh, she did not see anybody there, the murder accuser of having lied, accuser of being the killer's accomplice. I mean, I think she is the killer's accomplice, but I'm going to remind her and see what she says to that. Am I right in thinking you said that you did not speak to anyone on the day Sir Carmichael was murdered? It's the absolute truth. Yet, Lady Clark maintained that she saw you talking to a stranger on the front doorstep. Really? She must have been mistaken. Oh, I remember now. I'd forgotten all about it, but it wasn't important. It was just a salesman. One of those traders who sell stockings from door to door. Can you describe him? Medium size. Glasses. Dark suit and a felt hat. Not the sort of man you notice. Completely harmless. That's why I forgot all about That's him. A murderer, I'm sure. Nothing yet? He was very hesitant and shy. Usually door-to-door -door salesmen are very confident. But he wasn't. Um, ask whether she resigned of her own free will, point out that her departure is suspicious, indicate that she lied about leaving Churston. Oh, these are not easy choices to make. Uh, I'm going to say she resigned of her own free will. You did not leave Churston willingly, I believe. I don't wish to lie. Lady Clark did not appreciate my presence. And Franklin... 
cannot go against the wishes of a sick lady. He is a good man, and he worries a great deal about his sister-in-law. I noticed that you left some personal belongings behind at Churston. Ask if she will collect the objects. Ask if she will return to Churston. Say that the objects presented a risk. Um, Are you planning on going back to collect? No. I prefer not to carry the weight of the past. Yeah. I must ask you one last question. Please reply frankly with either yes or no. If Lady Clark had died, would you have agreed to marry Sir Carmichael if he'd ask you? How dare you ask such a question? That's not a yes or no. Sir Carmichael treated me just like his daughter. And all that I ever felt him was affection and gratitude, nothing else. Thank you, mademoiselle. I will not keep you any longer. I met Thora Gray on the stairs. Her cheeks were ablaze and she appeared to be deeply hurt. Poirot, have you offended the poor girl again? Do you have good reasons for accusing her? I accused her of nothing, Hastings. I simply asked her an important question she did not answer. Let us see if we can answer it for her. Mm. She didn't answer, did she? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Time for grey cell time. Would Fora have married Sir Carmichael if he had lived? Stay behind to sell Carmichael's affairs. Okay, this because that seems like it's important. Uh, was close to Fora. Uh, what is the face of our friendship with Sir Carmichael? Uh, about her relationship. Thora is a seductress. Because like they they all kind of do link like for a Sir Carmichael found Flora charming that links to him actually wanting to you know Flora is a seductress obviously makes sense that she would marry to cast Sir Carmichael Flora is evasive about a relationship with Sir Carmichael uh, Flora likes Franklin. A lot of these feel like they could link in. Man, this is hard. I'm trying to figure out which ones to go for here. No. Okay, let's try and look at this sensibly, shall we? I mean, we can. I, I forgot as well. There's a cl the clues that you can use. We haven't used a clue for the whole thing. Part of me wants to not use a clue at all, but if we get two stuff, we can use one. The Franklin one, I think we can write off. We don't need that. She is evasive about our relationship with Sir Carmichael. So let's get rid of these two. Get rid of that one as well. She's a seductress. He found her charming. He was close to her. Okay, that to me adds up to yes, she she would have. But let's take that way. Okay, she stayed to settle. She was very seductress, evasive about a relationship. Man, I'm just. There's too many options, that's the problem. I'm just clicking through as many as I can now. Oh man, which. What is it? Maybe I hint? Maybe I do a hint? I'm just trying to think out loud what it could be. So we're, we're thinking that. 
So she... What? Like, I've literally gone through them all and it hasn't really... The ones which I would have put aren't working. So, so she's a seductress. But maybe that's just us making that up. So maybe we just cut that one out. Maybe I'm making assumptions which I shouldn't be. I mean, he brought her a brooch. That's her getting something, right? I mean, that one just evasive about a relationship feels like she's trying, she's not giving something away. And it's either, I mean, the Franklin one we can write off because we're, we're not talking about Franklin. Seductress, I think, is a red herring sort of thing. I think Carmichael was close and offered a brooch. I think those two are very similar. So we probably don't put them together. Then we, I mean, that kind of almost feels like her, what she was doing for her job. So we can, so let's go with letters. Hey, there you go. Letter name. We got there. Wanted to be married and would certainly have succeeded in doing so. You must know how to read between the lines, Hastings. When Sir Carmichael refers to paternal affection, he's lying to himself. Read this engraving on the brooch. A dark dragon for an angel with glossy hair. These are the words of a lover, not a father. Lady Clark was not wrong. What if Sir Carmichael had fallen in love with his secretary? That doesn't mean that she forced him to do so. True, there are extenuating circumstances. She is a penniless orphan. But she is calculating. Just look how she avoided it when asked if she would have married Clark. I see. You think she seduced Sir Carmichael for her own gain, and that now she is doing the same with his brother. Praro, your world is a very dark place. Do not get carried away, mon ami. We have another more important matter to settle. Really? Yes. Would you believe that Miss Grey taught me something new? What the heck did she teach you? Let us now try and get our so brain cells to work. Oh, okay. Uh, successfully, oh, I got, I got another achievement. That we're smashing the achievements on this game, by the way. They, they must be. I mean, I don't know if they're easy, but I just guess as you're playing through the game, you get a lot of them. Uh, hang about. I think I know what it is. I think it's stockings. So she's got stocking boxes. Um, door to door salesman selling stockings. And Betty's mother brought the stockings as well. The stocking salesman. It's perfectly clear, Hastings. Perfectly clear. Indeed, a stocking seller visited Andover, Bexhill and Churston on the day of each murder. We have our suspect. This should be of interest, Jop. Okay. Uh, can we do... We need to do that something with the letter, don't we? If someone has tried to get rid of these documents, they may be important. For, so, wait, what, what is... I did the wrong thing. What is the... Our telephone, yeah. Chief Inspector... We are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect? Yes. Contact all the stocking wholesalers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. Boom. We are edging closer and closer. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Yes, I'm going to Cheltenham. You shouldn't travel today. You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. He ain't going Cheltenham. He going Doncaster. Can you get the post, Hastings? 
And why don't you go and get it yourself? All right, Hastings. Très bien. What's going on? I've never known Hastings to be so disagreeable. Jeez, Hastings was getting a bit mardy. Should we observe him and see? No, what I mean. I mean, it, the post is literally just there. It's a bit harsh to be like, Hastings, get up and get me the post. Another ABC murders. Poor Mr. Poirot. I'm quite sorry for you. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We've a long way to go still. Typerie? No, that comes later. Letter T. The next little incident will take place in Doncaster on September 11th. So long. ABC. I should compare this letter with the one on my desk which I received earlier to see if it does indeed come from the same person. Alright, let's compare the letters. Why is Hastings being a little bitch? No time for that. We have to compare the letters. Let us examine this more closely. Well, it's, I mean, we have to do just the same thing again, right? No, I don't want to quit. I want to... Back. There you go. Um, the eye. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yep. Yes, this eye is weird. Yes, the I characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. Yeah, I feel like this bit is a... I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. This bit is a little bit annoying because we, we've done it like again and again. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. We, and you can kind of tell straight away if the A and the I look the same. That's right. It's the A the characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. W. Do they have any lowercase w's? Hmm. The W is not printed properly. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. This guy should invest in a new typewriter. If he's going to be doing all this. Hey, Stings. He strikes tomorrow. Chief Inspector Jack. Achievement. He's on another line. Can I take a message? Yes, please, mademoiselle. It is from Hercule Poirot. Tell him ABC strikes tomorrow in Doncaster. He must call me back. Very well, sir. Bien. Now I'm going to see what I can find from these burnt documents. I've received the product I need. Hastings, if you do not mind, I would like you to take a few notes. Yes. Yes. What's wrong with this guy? Where do I decipher the burn? Do I do it here? No. Um. Do I do it here? Now, down to work. What of this needs putting in order, Halit? Ooh, another puzzle. Okay, corners. Always start with corners. Okay, don't always start with corners then. Um, this one? This page is child's play. Is it? Um, then this bit here? We're getting there. We are getting there. I think that this is right. Now oh, the page is a lot smaller than I thought it was. This page is so finished. 
Love a little puzzle. That's done. Three more to... Okay, um... No. It needs a... Where's the top line? I think it's that one. So if we pick this one up, that goes along the top. Yeah. Then we need something that goes along this long edge, which would be that. This page is child's play. Then we need the little sliver that goes along here. This piece should be placed here. And then you want to finish it up with the bottom. Boom. This page is finished. I, I like stuff like this. This this is my way. And that's two done. It's easier than I thought. Does not look too difficult. This page is finished. Boom. One more to go, and we're only one sorted. more. Keep going. So that goes there. This does not look too difficult. The top corner, which is this one. No. Is that not the top corner? goes like that. No? Okay. I guess this one is different. It's so simple. Then this one goes there. That one definitely is top corner. Why are you not going in? This page is you finished. Saw me trying to get in that top corner. All the pages are reconstructed. Okay. A bottle of solvent. Pour it all over. Solvent. The cloth is now soaked with solvent. <laughs> okay, just wipe it like that. Got it! Make a note, Hastings, make a note. Mrs. Ali Sasha, Sharpona in Andover. Tracatis, hemoptesis, prescribed laudanum. I got it! Look! Poirot, where on earth did you find these files? Burnt. On a fire at the bottom of the garden at Comside. All right, but where did the person who burned them find them? Uh, they'd found them in the... Uh, read, read, uh, they found them in the uh, medical notes, right? Alice Asher, shopkeeper in Hendover. Tracheitis, hemoptysis, chronic cough with loss of blood. Prescribed laudanum based cough medicine. Betty Barnard, waitress in Bexhill. Chronic bronchitis causing dysphonia. Oh, Advice to stop smoking. Alexander Bonaparte cast. While wounded, mustard gas and head trauma. Pulmonary emphysema. Hemoptysis. Coughing fits with blood. Suffers from absences and amnesia. Bam. Okay. That's the murderer guy. Dick Dudley Dunbar, owner of the Black Swan Hotel in Doncaster. Asthmatic, heart disease, heart condition. Well, we... Let us now try and get our brain cells we to work. We now know who the next murderer is going to be. Or murder... What do you call him? Uh, suspect is going to be. We know Cust C was someone else, so Cust is a person of interest. Boom. Straight away, the documents come from the Dr. Clark's patient records. The burned documents are medical records and without a doubt, they come Water. from Clark's archives. First of all, because all the patients have thought conditions. And secondly, cells. their name starts with either A, B, C or D. And it is precisely the files that match these letters that have been tampered with. But why burn these files? How come the names of the two victims appear on them? And who are the two other patients? These are very good questions. Oh, 
Time to talk to Yap. So we're not going to say, let's get on the phone because tomorrow this guy's going to get murdered. Donald, whatever his name is. Hello, Poirot? Any news, Chief Inspector? You wanted a stocking seller? We have one. Reported by his landlady who thought he was behaving suspiciously. He has the most unbelievable name. I think it's Cust. Alexander Bonaparte Cust. Alexander Bonaparte Cust. Yes, Alexander Bonaparte Cust. How did you guess? Poro, you have magical powers. It's a serious lead. I called Doncaster. A person matching Cust's description has been seen at the station. He got off the train from London, but after that, nobody knows where he went. Um... It was the Black Swan Hotel in Doncaster, wasn't it? Look for him at the Black Swan Hotel. What? How do you know he's there? Trust me, Chief Inspector. You appear to be very sure of yourself. Very well. I'll call the Black Swan straight away. The owner is going to get a shock when he learns that there's a murderer under his roof. Uh, da, 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 da. Do I want to do it? Chief Inspector, I would rather call myself. As you wish. Please go ahead. I guess we're calling. Hello, the Black Swan. Hercule Poirot here. May I speak to the owner? Speaking. Dick Dudley Dunbar. How can I help you? Dick Dudley Dunbar. Is there Mr. Cust among your guests? He arrived today. Shall I call him for you? Uh, let's speak to Dunbar first. No, it is you I wish to speak with. But who is this Cust? Uh... He's a killer. A murderer? A murderer? Under my roof? It's not possible. I don't believe it. Do you think that Cust might be dangerous? Oh, I do hope you're wrong. He seems so harmless, you know. Yes, completely harmless. Um, warn him that Cust is dangerous. Do not be fooled. He has already killed three people and you are next. A murderer? Under my roof? Good Maybe God. we shouldn't have... Dunbar, can you hear me? Dunbar! Hello? Dunbar has had malaise. That's all we needed. I'm calling the Doncaster police. I hope they get there quickly. Yeah, maybe we didn't handle that right. Hello, Poirot. We have some good news. The police in Doncaster have caught our man at the Black Swan Hotel. They're sending him here by train. How is the hotel owner? He had a heart attack. He was taken to the hospital. Oh, damn. Yeah, he had a bad heart. Oh, no. It is my fault. When I told him to kill what has his hotel, I should have been more considerate. Come on, Poro. You weren't to know he had a weak heart. But I should have known. I saw his medical records. Do not torture yourself, Poro. Damn it. His attack was not fatal thanks to the quick intervention of the ambulance team. Oh, okay. Oh, please so give me informed on his progress. You can count on me. I'll do what's needed. I will visit him I at his bedside mistakes. when the murderer is caught. That's typical of you, Poro. We should focus on the next part of the investigation in order to avoid other incidents. No, of course. What mistakes did I make? While we're waiting to question Cust, we could search his room in London. Where does he live? The Marbury Guesthouse. I'll see you there. Yes, but start without me. First of all, I have to sort out a few details for Cust's transfer. I understand. A bientôt. Hastings, we are making good progress. Please go and search the room of our number one suspect. With pleasure. I did have a dentist appointment, but I'll cancel. The dentist? So that is why you are so nervous and bad-tempered. A visit to the dentist is never an enjoyable prospect. But an unavoidable one. Go to your appointment, Hastings. I will manage on my own. He's in even bad mood now. There you go. So we we caught the murderer, and um, we although we did to Marbury Guest House, please. We did stop 
Dunbar, I think his name was, being killed, we did give him a heart attack by telling him he might be killed. So it didn't go completely to plan. Um, and I think that's two hours. I've got so many achievements today. It's ridiculous. Prevented the fourth crime. Perfect. So I think next week will be the end for sure. Uh, but I think I'm going to finish there because I've done two hours. Don't want to do any more um, than that. And we'll be able to come back, finish it off next week, finish this whole game. So I've got the full playthrough on my YouTube if you ever want to watch it. Um, and yeah, then we'll probably, what are we looking at date wise? So we finish next week, which is the 20th. And we're looking at three more weeks until, because I'm not by, I'm getting uh, Starfield on Game Pass. So I won't be getting it early. So three weeks, it's, I think it comes out around about the 10th, the 9th or 10th, don't know. So I've got three weeks to fill 27th and 3rd. Not three weeks, two weeks to fill 27th and 3rd. So I'll pick out a game, probably not um, one that's going to be super intensive or anything like that. Um, yeah, but I'm also, I'm not sure what I want to do because, okay, we're going to do Starfield for all of September probably for a couple of hours, right? But, let me just pause this. Um, I have recently gone a, done a little bit of a splurge and got myself a PS5. And I'm thinking when Spider-Man 2 comes out, I will be playing that. Because I love me a bit of Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man 1, the game on PS4, was my favourite. When it, it still probably is up there with one of my favourite games. It's not quite... I think maybe Frostpunk beats it just because I really enjoy playing that still. Um, but yeah... Spider-Man is up there with one of my favorite. Like, I, I finished the story and I would just swing around the city because it was just so much fun, like the mechanics and everything. So, um, I'm thinking I might be playing Spider-Man when it comes out. If I can afford it, that is. Because I just bought a PS5. Um, and I need to figure out how to wire it up and how it looks because we've got the PS5 in our lounge because me and my wife will play it. Uh, both play it, so um, I'll need to move it in so I can stream with it every now and then. But yeah, um, we'll figure that out when it comes to it. But I'll probably play Starfield still. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do. Maybe stream one week on, one week off for each. Or stream a whole month of Starfield, then stream Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man will take less time to finish. But I don't want to not play Starfield at all, so I'll, I'll, I'll give it a thought. This is a problem that I only do a couple of hours every Sunday, so I don't really get time to really invest in a game. Maybe for a couple of weeks, I'll do a Saturday and a Sunday. So I'll do like Saturday, a couple of hours doing one game, and Sunday, a couple of hours doing the other. But we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out when we get there. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed. We're getting to the end of this game. This game obviously isn't as high a budget or anywhere near as good as like those like AAA games. But I'm actually enjoying it. I love um, Agatha Christie stories. They always, always kind of keep you on your toes thinking, oh, what's, what's what? Um, I'm not really sure who the killer is right to the end for, most, for the most part. So um, I still don't know really what the end result is going to be because I feel like Cust is probably in cahoots with someone. But we'll see. Uh, next week when we finish it up uh, but yeah thanks for watching remember to like comment subscribe and i will see you when i see you